الحمد لله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Today's topic is nine short stories nine short stories verified by Abdul Rahman ibn al-Jawzi and we know تفضل عليه السلام and we know that Abdul Rahman ibn al-Jawzi he doesn't narrate anything that has no basis in fact, he's someone who loathes fabrications and he's somebody who actually includes very weak hadiths and he considers them fabrications. So he's not lenient in hadith. So when someone like Abdul Rahman al Jawzi or Imam al Dhahabi or Imam al Nawawi or any of them, uh, brothers, you need to move. Uh, when, when, when one of them narrates a story, you can you have to you rest assured that that story has a strong basis so i'm going to tell you today nine short stories and the predominant topic not all of them but predominantly they are from the awliya who have been given a level of istijab dawa that has sometimes been called all right kun he says to the thing, be and it is. That's the degree to which his dua is, is, is accepted. Yuru'an Ibrahim ibn Adham. The first three come from the great Zahid Ibrahim ibn Adham. Radiallahu anhu. Annahu kana ala ba'di jibali Mecca yuhadithu ashaba. He was out in the outskirts of Mecca on one of the mountains giving, uh, talking to his companions. His, he had disciples and followers. Faqala. لو أن وليا من أولياء الله تعالى قال لهذا الجبل زل لزال. If one of the awliya of Allah Taala was on this mountain and he says, "O oh mountain, disappear." In other words, shake until you disappear. Like a mountain, if it quakes, quake is the best word. Not not disappear, quake. It would quake. Okay. فتحرك الجبل so the mountain started moving. فَضَرَبَهُ Ibrahim بِرِجْلِ So Ibrahim stomped down with his foot. وَقَالَ لَهُ أُسْكُنْ إِنَّمَا ضَرَبْتُكَ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابِ He said, <laughs> he said, stop, I was just giving an example. SubhanAllah al -Azim. He was speaking about the awliya and Allah wanted to show his companions that he's one of them. That the mountain started to quake and he said, no, 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 I was just giving an example. SubhanAllah This is also in the earlier book from Abdul Rahman al Jawzi called Hilya to by uh, Al Isbahani. Yeah, Abu Nu'im al Isbahani. Some people call it Isbahani with a B, and others call it Isfahani with a F. The Arabs uh, called it both things. The second one is also that he was on an, uh, a boat. And then they got a bad storm while he was on the boat. Ibrahim In the middle of the storm, as the uh, the storm is shaking with the with the boat, Ibrahim and Adam goes and he takes a nap in the middle of the storm. He puts he takes out a pillow or he he takes finds a spot and he takes a nap. We don't know if he used a pillow or not because he was such a zahid that some people say he was like Sayyidina Isa. And uh, that he hardly had any possessions. We just have to, we just have to move uh, there. Yeah. So he's on this boat. Hey, you need this one too. This rug too. Okay. So he's on this boat. He takes a nap. His companions, his disciples. They said to him, you're taking a nap. Do you not see this calamity that we're in? This is a calamity. They said, well, of course it is. He said, this is not a disaster. The disaster for us is needing people. Like uh, a severe state. Is having need for people. Then he rose up, seeing the, the distress on his disciples. 
faces. He said, oh, my Lord. You have showed us your power. Yani we're submitted. We renewed our toba. We renewed the knowledge of that you're in absolute control. We know that in theory, but sometimes we don't feel it. So show us now your forgiveness and your protection. Al-afu can mean forgiveness and it can mean protection. So the, the ocean became so still, it was like hardened oil. Like when oil hardens over, right? It's like oil. The third story is also about Ibrahim ibn Adam. He was in the road with his companions. A lion came up to him. His companion said, Ya Ibrahim, he said, Oh Ibrahim, we have a wild uh, a predator. A sabu' is a, pro- is a predator. So he said, Show me. Ibrahim, then when Ibrahim looked at him, قال, قسورتو, قسورة is another name for lion. In kunta umirta fina bishay, fumdi, lima umirta be. He said, O lion, if you have been commanded by Allah to do something to one of us or to any of us, then do it. No resistance. If it's from Allah, no resistance. Wa illa fatanahana. And if not, then step aside from us. Then all of a sudden, the lion started to wag its tails. By the way, Asad is a wild cat. Uh, any type of big wild cat. So it could be a, a puma, a leopard. Doesn't necessarily, don't always imagine it's a lion with a mane. Because those are not anyway in the Arabian Peninsula. But they have a lot of pumas, leopards, those types of large and, and predatorial cats. Then it started wagging its tail and ran away. And we were just in awe that the lion understood the speech of Ibrahim. Those three are about the great and the legend of the Zuhad Ibrahim ibn Adham. The fourth one is from one of the companions of Dawood al-Ta'i. Dawood al-Ta'i is also one of the first early Zuhad. Now remember, all the early Zuhad and the forebears of Ahl al-Tasawwuf, all of them, they were like individual figures. They didn't have groups. They had some companions. But their, the, the way back in that time was to go far away from everybody and to worship Allah all alone. And a lot of times they didn't have families. Like, I don't think any of these have, most of them did not have families. Ibrahim ibn Adam never married, right? So they just live wandering, doing ibadah in different masajid, and, and people followed them. Yurwa an rajulim min ashabi Dawood al-Ta'i anna uqal, dakhaltu ala Dawood. I entered in upon Dawood al-Ta'i. Faqala liya ma hajatu. He said, what's your need? Qultu ziyaratu, to visit you. As for you, you've done something good visiting another Muslim. But he said, but consider my circumstance when it is said to me, who are you that people visit you? Are you from the worshippers? No, Allah. No, by Allah, I'm not. I'm in a Zuhadi and are you from one of the ascetics? And he says, La Wallahi. Then he continued to blame himself. As a youth, you were a fasiq. You are a sinner. And as an older man, you're showing off. And then when you became a sheikh, or sorry, the first one is when you got older, you're a mudahin, you're selling your deen for your dunya. And then when you got older, now you're showing off. You're a murai. 
لا والله إلا المرائي أشر من الفاسق he said and which means you're getting worse the one showing off he's worse than a sinner وجعل يقول يا إله السماوات والأرض هب لي رحمة من عندك تصلح شبابي وتقيني من كل سوء وتعلي في أعلى مقامات الصالحين مكاني so he said oh my lord lord of the heavens and the earth have mercy upon me to rectify my youth and to protect me from everything evil and to raise my ranks to be with one of the Sadiqin. So these karamats that you see from these people is, is always coupled with the degree of self-blame and belief of self-worthlessness that is hard for us to imagine. In a second, we might have to go to the back room if they start vacuuming here. Number five. I said that we're going to read nine short stories, and the ninth one is from the Prophet. That's going to be the Miskal Khitam because it really is one of the most amazing stories you'll see. You'll hear. وعن عبد الله بن عبد الرحمن قال حج سفيان الثوري مع شيبان الراعي. So Sufyan al Thawri, he was a hadith scholar, he was a faqih. But he also, he had a great uh, amount of time he spent searching out the Zuhad. It said, he used to spend time with Hassan al-Basri. They together used to go visit Rabi al-Adawiyah. And here, he's with a man named Sha'ban al-Ra'i. Sha'ban the shepherd. On the way to Hajj, a lion came out. So Sufyan says, Ama tara hadha al-Asad? He said, look at this lion. He's blocked everyone. We're all stuck. And all the people are afraid. He said, don't worry. Okay. When he, the lion heard Shaban's voice, he looked at him. I'm assuming bas basa is he looked at him. I'm not familiar with that word, but I'm assuming it says he looked at him. He came so close to him, Shaban took his ear. So he and he rubbed it. Okay. Okay. And he started wagging his tail and he left right away. The lion just left right away. Sufyan. He said, Sufyan said, What kind of display is this? What a display of karamat in front of everybody here. You think this is anything? Shaban Rai says, you think this is shohra? You think this is a display of karamat? If it was not for being a display of karamat, I would have put all of my stuff on him and rode him to Mecca. That's the fifth sort of from Shaban al Rai and Sufyan al Thawri. Now, this next one is also from Sufyan al Thawri. Okay. It is said that a man, his name is Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Abad, Abad al Makki. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Abad al Makki. And now, Kala Kadima Alayna Shaykh Yukna bi Abi Abdullah. Now, He's saying that we heard from a man, a sheikh, an older man. His name is Abu Abdullah. Is Abu Abdullah قال, I went to the well of Zamzam in the last third of the night. And there was a man who covered his face uh, with his garment. And he went, took his cup went into the well, and he drank. And he left the, uh, the cup there. So I took the leftover, I took the leftover of his drink, and I drank. And lo and behold, it was as if it was honey mixed in the zamzam. I have never tasted water sweeter than it. So I looked at the sheikh, but he had left. So the next night, in the last third of the night, Everyone was doing their ibadah, and I'm waiting by Zamzam. And again, 
the sheikh comes having covered his face. And he gets and he drinks from the well of Zemzem and he puts the cup down. So I immediately took the leftover of his drink and lo, it tasted like a different type of sweet drink. Not, not the what didn't taste like water, it tasted like another type of sweet drink. Now it was the third night. And he again, the same man came to the well of Zemzem and he drank it. So I immediately, this time, I grabbed the man's garment. All right. I grabbed the man's garment and I held it while I drank. And lo, it was as if it was uh, milk mixed with something sweet. Okay. Mix it with sugar, milk with sugar. Sweeter than everything I've ever drank. So I said, Sheikh, by the Lord of this house, Tell me who you are. He says, will you keep it a secret? He says, yes. He says, I'm Sufyan al-Thawri. Sufyan al-Thawri. So Sufyan al-Thawri, he he's a man of karamat. He wasn't just a man of hadith and fiqh. SubhanAllah. Now to the seventh story. This is about Abi Rayhan. He's a Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was one of those who, after the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was riding a boat. And he was sewing something on the boat. And his needle, the boat shook a little bit, his needle fell and went into the water while the waves were crashing. So he says, Azimu alayka ya Rab. He says, My Lord, I ask with Azima, with strength, return me my needle. Return me my needle. And they looked, and a wave came and popped the needle right back into the boat. A wave came. It's like, How do you get a needle out of the ocean? With his draw, he got a needle out of the ocean. Someone may ask the question. We know a fair things are from Allah only. But here it seems as if these Sahaba and these people of the Salaf, uh, the matters are happening because they want it to happen. So which is it? Them or is it Allah? These people have altered, they've negated themselves. They've contradicted themselves, their egos. They go against their egos so much that They've actually completely transformed their hearts and their whims. Their hearts are now only attract, they only attract the divine will. So a, a Sahabi like this would not say this unless he felt something inside him first. And when they feel something inside them, pulling them to say something or to do something, then it happens. Why? Because that pull is in fact the divine decree. They're moved by the divine decree. So anything that they say, it happens because they don't desire anything other than what's already willed and their hearts. They've negated themselves, their egos, and they preferred Allah's will over their will so much that they find a sweetness with Allah's will. So they detect it with their hearts. And once they detect it with their hearts, they go after it and they get it. So that's the difference between them and everybody else. Then the ocean started to rile up again after that. So Abu Rayhana, he looked at the ocean. He said, Uskut inna ma anta abd. Uskun inna ma anta abd. He said to the ocean, stay silent. You're nothing but a slave. Until the ocean settled, until it was like shiny. That means not a single wave. Now, the eighth one is not necessarily sim like these karamat, but it's something really special that you should, you should listen to. وَرُوِيَ أَنَّ رَجُلًا رَجُلًا مِنْ أَهْلِ دِمَشْقِ يُسَمَّ بِأَبِي عَبْدِ رَبِّهِ This man is named Abu Abdi Rabbi. 
he was the richest man in Dimashq. He was a businessman. And he went on a business trip. And he had a, uh, a house right next to the water. On this business trip, he took a house. He took up a house right next to the water. As Sayyidina Adi says, the, the, uh, the, the rich, they're not even traveling when they're traveling. They're so rich, right? Allah has given them so much wealth that even when they're traveling, they have every amenity possible because of their wealth. And the poor, they're never comfortable even in their own homes. So subhanAllah, that's how it is. So he ends up uh, sitting and looking over the balcony at the water, the beauty of the water in the middle of the, uh, in the nighttime. And all of a sudden he hears a voice. Here's a voice talking. So he looks over the balcony and he finds and he hears his voice and he hears somebody saying things. So he leaves the, he gets curious. He goes out, leaves the balcony, goes downstairs, goes out of the house and he looks and follows the voice up. And he found a man wrapped up in some straw, like a straw mat. He's wrapped up in a straw mat. فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ وَقُلْتُ لَهُ مَنْ أَنْتَ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ He said, I said, Salaam alaykum. Who are you? قَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who are you, O slave of Allah? He said, uh, just a man from the Muslims. قُلْتُ مَا هَذِي الْحَالَ What is the state that you're in? Wrapped up in a straw mat? Laying down, wrapped up in a straw mat. He says, this is the state of blessing which requires shukr. This is blessing that requires shukr. How, when you're wrapped up in a straw mat, like where's the nama in that? If you ask anybody, they're going to say it's not, not something to be thankful for. Allah created me. And he created me with beauty. And he said, made my birth and my upbringing in Islam. And all of my limbs are healthy. And he covered all my sins. That means he didn't humiliate me in my sins. Who has a greater gift, blessing, than someone who goes to sleep in this state? He has all these things. May Allah have mercy on you. Come to my house. I have this, like, a, I have this, uh, this home. We're, we're saying, and we overlook the river, like a beautiful property overlooking the river. And he said, why? He says, so you can eat a little bit and we'll give you some of some clothes that you won't need to wrap yourself in this straw mat. I have no need for this. And he refused to come with me. So I left. I left despising myself. He said, I, when I came here, I did not leave back in Damascus anyone with more wealth than me. And you know the Damascus types, these are the elites. There's no more elite in terms of the way they act, the way they live, than the people of Damascus. Sometimes you think the people of the Khalij are like that, but no, nobody matches in history, like uh, historically speaking, the people of Damascus are something else. The people of Damascus are something else in their uh, everything about themselves. He said, I didn't leave Damascus behind anyone richer than me, yet I'm traveling to get more money. I'm already the richest man, but I've traveled to get more riches. Allahumma inni atubu ilayka mimma anafi. Oh Allah, I repent to you from this state that I'm in. That I'm the richest of men. And I'm yet I'm seeking more money. Okay. Because just because you can do something 
doesn't mean it's good for you. And it is so often the case that when you can do something, you don't stop. You don't know when to stop. Most people, they're not modest. It's just the door of wealth hasn't opened. If the door of wealth opens, every single one of us would go through it, right? And it is a harder test to know how to handle this wealth, okay? It's a harder test. That's why Allah actually protects most people from that test because it's too hard for them. Other people don't have much of ibadah, don't have much of anything, yet they're able to handle that test. And those people, Imam al-Haddad says, they are one of the four pillars of a community is the wealthy who know how to handle their test, their wealth, and they give it where it belongs. So the, the community is established based upon them. Most massage are only established by a handful of people, cover 85% of the budget. Everyone, everyone else gives some of uh, their donations is 15% of the budget. This is like the, the way it is. And it's also the way the wealth is distributed. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, nine-tenths of wealth is for the merchant, someone who's selling something. Yeah. So he says, Allah mini atubu ilayk. I repent to you from what I'm in. Nobody knew what I had intended. None of my fellow businessmen, family knew what I had, had I intended. So everyone left. Uh, and they all said, let's go for the business trip. Let's continue our business trip. But while no, while I refused and I went back to Damascus, he didn't finish his business trip. He said, by Allah, I am not sincere in this repentance if I continue to my journey. If I continue and do this business trip, and then I'm not sincere. It's just talk. So he went back and all the people said, what are you doing? They all blame me. Are you going to give up this opportunity? Okay. Because again, if you can, it's the biggest allure of something you can do it why not he found another motive the narrator of this story says when this man arrived to damascus he started putting his hand in his wealth without looking and giving it away another thing about the wise businessmen why they're such givers of wealth they know how to make it back they're so good at making the money back so they're the best at giving it away because they have no fear where there's someone who doesn't know how to make money and you give him a million dollars, he's not going to know what to do with it. He's going to be stingy with it because he doesn't know how to win it back. And he gave away all his money and he died as a abid living on a basic wage or, or on a basic living, yeah. having lost interest okay, in the issue of wealth and having gained interest in the issue of zuhud. Until... When he the moment of his death came, they had to look around for money in his house to buy his kefan and dig his grave and bury him in it. That was the eighth story. Now for the last and final story, and this is with the story of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is taking us right up to Ishraq time anyway. Yurwa. And the Sahaba, a Sahabi, Qatada ibn Nu'man al Ansari. The Sahabi's name is Qatada, the son of Nu'man, the Ansari, meaning that he's from the residents of Medina and who welcomed the Muhajirin from Mecca. Okay. He was an archer. That's name is mentioned amongst the archers of Badr and the archers of Uhud. Okay. On the day of Uhud, an arrow came in, plucked his eye, and caught Fasalat al Khaddi, and his eye popped out. His eye popped out and was dangling onto his cheek. His eye was dangling onto his cheek with the veins, bleeding. And the veins are holding his eye together, but his eye is on his cheek. Okay. He ran, he held his eye, he, he leaned it up. And he ran to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet said, what happened to you, Qatad? This is what you, this, it's what you see. Oh, Messenger of Allah, my eye is out. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In shi'ta sabarta wa lakal jannah. 
if you wish, you be patient. And this is a guarantee of Jannah. Sabarta wa lakal Jannah. وَإِنْ شِئْتَ رَدَتْتُهَا لَكَ وَدَعَوْتُ اللَّهَ لَكَ فَلَمْ تَفْقِدْ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا And if you wish, I will put it back for you. I'll make dua for you and you will not miss. You will not have any effect. There will be no trace of this injury on your eye. فَقَالَ Now this is the kicker right here. You've never seen a line like this from a sahabi. فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الْجَنَّةِ لَجَزَاءٌ جَزِيدٌ Paradise is an amazing reward. وَعَطَاءٌ جَلِيدٌ And an amaz- a, a majestic gift. وَلَكِنِّي مُبْتَلَى بِحُبِّ النِّسَاءِ But Allah has tested me. I love women. وَأَخَافَ أَخَافُ أَنْ يَقُلْنَ أَعْوَرْ فَلَا يُرِدْنَنِي and I'm afraid they'll say he's blind in one eye. Awar. Fala yuridnani. And they won't want me. In other words, I'm gonna women won't, won't want me. I'm blind in one eye. Walakin. But I would want you, uhib, I would love for you to put it back and ask Allah for paradise for me. SubhanAllah. Fakala Af'alu Dalika ya qatab. I will do that, O Qatab. He took my eye and he placed it with his hand exactly how it was. And it was of better vision than the other one, than it was before. It was, be- it was a better vision now than it was before. Okay. It was, it, he had better, he had excellent eyesight up to his death because most of the Arabs used to go blind from having so many dates. It's as if they would have some kind of form of diabetes. And it was so common for all Arabs to go blind at the end of their lives. But he had perfect eyesight with that eye until he died. And the, and the Prophet ﷺ prayed for him for Jannah. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was the Khalifa, right, his son entered in upon Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He was a young man. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz says, Man ante ya feta. Who are you, oh, young man? And it was very common back in the day. When you come in, you identify yourself by your lineage. You, you talk about who your grandparents are and who your forefathers are, what tribe you're from. So the he faqala, Ana ibn al-Ladi salat ala khaddi aynuhu. I'm the son of the one whose eye fell onto his cheek. Faruddat bi kafil mustafa ahsan al raddi. And it was placed by the hand of the messenger himself in the best of manners. And it returned to as it was and even better. He said, and what a per- beautiful eye it became and what a beautiful one put it back. Omar ibn, Khat- uh, ibn Abdul Aziz shook his head and he says, and if you want something, bring something like this. And a statement like that, you're going to get what you want. If you're telling me that this is your father, the one who the prophet did that for him, and you're the son, that's, that's his means to get what he wants from the Khalifa, you're going to get what you want. So we finished with that story because of the amazing honesty. And the prophet, says, I said, him, doesn't say anything. That the man, he says, he's... He's going to marry and he loves women. So he wants, and the Prophet doesn't say anything. Right? So you think that we, uh, a dean or what have you, people would be shy to say that and wouldn't. Sahaba were, were honest with the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet. If they're guided and they're following, the, following his sunnah, he accepted the states that they were in and, and the desires that they had. All right, inshallah, we'll open up the chat right now. See what we have. Is that? Oh, sure. All right, let's see what we have. All right, we have a lot of our uh, brothers and sisters, H. Baz, Aisha Mukhtar, Shekazi, G. Spice, Sani, and what? Aisha Rauf, Suhaiba, Wan. Farhana, Farha, R2D2, 
VH Hokey, uh, Mixer, Diana, Embia, Harris, Mara, Imran, Sharif, MashaAllah, Musa and Hamza. So if anyone doesn't have any comments or questions, inshallah for today, we wrap up, we'll pray our Ishraq, which is also Duha, same thing. Inshallah, we'll wrap up. There's a delay, so we have to wait. Weekend session? This session? Well, no, I always do this. Um, we do this every day in Ramadan. But uh, today we had the Etikaf. So I just happened to be here. Otherwise, I just do it from my home and it broadcasts to the, uh, uh, to the MBIC and J page. Oh. Yeah, the MBIC YouTube page. All right, folks, we had a long day. It's been a 12 hour shift, essentially, from seven the youth came in right subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilus salihat wa tawassaw bil haqq wa tawassaw bis sabr wassalamu